Welcome back to this section. Now, in this section of the course, we'll be going over clauses. Clauses are essentially the building blocks for SQL queries. So in this part, we will just cover the basic clauses thereof. To start that, we will need to open our um, worksheet, a brand new worksheet. So um, first and foremost, we might not be able to just go straight into using the worksheet. So the first thing we will be, we expect to use like a, to select a, a warehouse. So we use the default warehouse, which is the compute warehouse. And that's the first thing. However, in this section, we wouldn't really be writing so much, but normally we should also go to our databases and then we have a view of the database that we'll be doing queries from. Now, in terms of the courses, I would um, essentially list all of them in the order that SQL expects to receive them. Now, note, you don't have to use all the clauses every single query. You just need to use the ones that are necessary for your query. The only caveat is you must follow the order that the you know, sort of like designed to follow. So I would essentially give you nine basic clauses, which is, okay, so we have from, we have join, we have where, then we have group by, then we have order by, not have have it before order by, and then we have order by. And then we have limits and then we have right. And so these are the nine basic clauses. Now, one thing um, to do as a practice is to always name your worksheet. So this might be a good time to rename the worksheet and then we call it the clauses worksheet. And so now we have our nine basic clauses and so we just go over each and every one of them um so the first one is um and select is essentially the same thing as saying like print or telling sql to show me this right so we can essentially say select a um, in strings and um sql will show a you could say select one plus one and SQL will show two, right? It will print what you need. And so we also have the next clause, which is from, which is usually used together with select. Um, this from is essentially saying, like, this is where you should select from. So imagine it like you want to select apples and then you're saying maybe you have several baskets. Right, you have a green basket, you have a red basket, a, you know, yellow basket, and you want to select apples from the green basket. So, say you select apples from the green basket. So, this is the tables. So, the tables is where you select from, usually. You select it from the tables. So, it could be a way to say, oh, select this column from this um, table. Another clause is the join clause. Now, the join clause is essentially used when you want to extend your data. So um, in most cases, the data are not stored in one table. Right? So you might have a data that basically stores maybe people's uh, details and say like the ID, right? So this is the people's details. And ID, maybe their ID, their uh, essentially their name, the date of birth, their address. And then you have another table that is maybe saying, okay, Mr. Man with ID number one did this transaction on the first day of December. And then you know, like this. And so basically, when you want to sort of like have um, some sort of analysis that costs across these two tables, then you would have to join the tables. Now we go to the next one, which is the where clause. 
The word clause is essentially used to filter your data or in other words, your tables. It is used to filter your tables. And usually it's also used together with select and fetch. So now if you remember, we said select is essentially selecting columns while where is essentially filtering rows. So there might be some rows that you do not want to see, right, in your data. So I give an example of where you say, okay, I want to select the details of everybody that lives in, say, Quara, or maybe, um, like maybe London, for instance, right? So you're essentially selecting all the data, but only where the location is London. This is, uh, this is, this is a very good example. Another very good example is when you select the apples, right? And we said, okay, we have a basket, a green basket that contains apples, oranges, and mangoes. However, we could say we want to select the apples, right? This is the columns. But we can also filter in the apples and say, we only want to select apples that are above a certain cage. And so within the apples, only give me the one above a certain cage. And so this is where you find where it's used to filter. And then you have the group by. Now the group by is essentially used to aggregate data. The group by is used to aggregate data. So group by uh, is usually used together with select and from. And um, the whole point is to maybe like sum up data or find averages or counts. And we will definitely go into more details as we progress in the course. And then we have the having. The having is essentially similar to where, but it's slightly different in the sense that having is used to filter aggregates, while where is used to filter rows. So you have like your raw rows that you filter with your where. However, you filter um, aggregates with having. We will go more into this topic later. Then we have the order by. The order by is essentially used to sort the data. So uh, assuming we want to get like, you know, um, the data of a certain group of students from a class, right? And then we want to sort the data by the height. And, you know, we want to see this, uh, the details of the students by their height, for instance. So we would order the data by a certain column, which will help us to, you know, like um, position the, the data by, you know, the height or whatever we need to see. Now we have limit. Limit is essentially to reduce the amount of rows that we get when we, um, when we, you know, sort of, you know, query data. So for instance, at times it's used to do like top, top, um, maybe if you want to bring like the oldest, the five oldest people in the class, right? if like the former example where I said we could order the data of the class by say the age. And so we could say, oh, the five oldest people. So we only want to see five rows. So limit is a very good opportunity to only bring five rows in this case. So we just limit by five. Another very good reason to use limit could be if you just want to sample data, you just want to feel the data, right? And then we have the union. Now union is very similar to join. However, it sort of like appends data. So if you're very used to programming languages like Python, especially with pandas, you could be appending data by joining similar data. Right? This this is the difference is with you on your joint similar data. So let me give an example. If I have data of people who sort of like registered into um into maybe a school at a certain, this is the name and the details of the date of birth and the address. And so this was done, uh, this, this table was for the students who registered in the first year. So in the second year, we have another 
set of students who just registered for the first time. And then we want to combine these two data because the two data are essentially similar in structure. A good way to combine this data will be to bring on the data. It's just also very similar to if we have apples in one basket and we have apples in the other basket. We have apples and bananas in one basket, apples and bananas in the other basket. And we say, oh, it's better for us to just use one basket. Then this could be a very good opportunity to just, you know, pour the two, two, two uh, you know, fruits in one basket. So this is like a very good use case for fruiting. Now, in the next part, we will do a little bit of tricks first before we start diving into the actual clauses. Um, see you in that one. Take care.